Hello, my name is Bill Gobel. I'm a co-founder and principal engineer at Exeter. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about a really cool and powerful tool that we've added to our OEMX suite, the Environmental Profile Generator. OEMX is a suite of tools designed to help engineers analyze their designs for improving quality, reducing rework, and uh, therefore reducing development cost and schedule. One of the tools in the OEMX suite is FMEDAX. FMEDAX is a tool to perform failure mode effect and diagnostic analysis, and it is used to predict failure rates. So what we're really talking about today is predicting failure rates for a specific custom environmental stress profile. To do an FMEDA, you've got to have a component reliability database. And when we started Exeter, we looked at perhaps a dozen of them, which existed at the time. We found two of them were pretty valuable, the Siemens SN29500 and the IEC TR62380. Um, they were both available and up to date uh, back in the early 2000s. What did we choose? Well, what we decided to do was take the best information from both along with other outside reference sources and combine them into our own formulas with our own parameters to do the best possible optimal job of predicting failure rates. And of course, we keep those formulas and those parameters up to date based on our field, field failure studies. The thing we didn't find was much information on electronic failure modes and failure mode distributions. Uh, there was virtually no information about mechanical component uh, failure modes and distributions. So we had to create our own. We eventually called it our component reliability database. We use the stress strength concept as our principal thought mechanism. The idea is any manufactured population will have some variation in its strength. And that can be characterized by a probability distribution. Likewise, the environmental stress, which varies all over the place, varies for sure, can also be characterized by a probability distribution. And what we find is the failure occurs right here when the stress is greater than the strength. So we think about what are these stress factors and what are these strength factors? What's the horizontal axis of this chart? There are a number of factors that we've looked at and I've got the mechanical or the electronic list in front of us right now. And average temperature is probably a big deal. Of course, altitude probably is too uh, in small geometry semiconductors. But look at all the rest. There's all the mechanical stress, there's electrical stress, um, and even maintenance stress. And think about all the combinations of these things together. Well, we've been busy working on models to deal with all of these variables as fast as we can. And as soon as we get some data, and we've got a pretty good job so far. Now we also think about design strength. We start with average strength, which is pretty much what you get from field failure data, because there's a wide variety of product designs. But we know that designers can add special features to their designs, their products, in order to increase the strength. And that's good because the failure rate should drop. So we also try to take into account many of the design stress variables. And we've done a few of those in the new environmental profile, uh, in the profile generator, it, uh, in the profile editor itself, and in the uh, CRD selection when you're doing the FMEDA. Now, We'd start with standard environmental profiles. And that's because many people um, 
don't, we're not certain. So we have good guidelines and we can get you started with our standard environmental profiles. And many people choose one of those and proceed with their FMEDA analysis. But if you need something special, you can now choose the environmental profile editor. The environmental profile editor provides variables into the CRD, which are used in the equations, which generate the component failure rates and failure modes which is used in the FMEDA to predict the failure rates. So it kind of works out. We're now taking a custom environmental profile and generating a very specific failure rate prediction. And one of the cool things that our developers did was if I have an old FMEDA where I used profile one or profile two, and now I want to see what the failure rate prediction is for the custom environmental profile. All I have to do is enter a profile, select it in the FMEDA tool, and the tool will recalculate all the failures based on the new profile. And, and uh, I think that's I think that's pretty great. It saved me a lot. Now let me show you one of these, and let's um, let's bring up one of these. There's the environmental profile live and online. And I'm going to talk about a new profile called warehouse robot package handler. So obviously I've got a robot inside a warehouse. We hope to sell it all over the world, but I'm not convinced the industrial profiles are what we want. So let's go through this. I know that it's not a mechanical device, so we're not going to use any dynamic uh, mechanical dynamic checkbox. I do want I, the boards will be coated, which increases their strength. So that box is checked. We estimate the average ambient temperature in a warehouse. Let's think about this a little bit. Um, well, it's not as Temperature controlled as much as we'd like. It's probably cooler, but eh, it's probably, we'll make a good guess, 20 degrees. So we enter the number 20. I don't think the uh, condensation is going to be condensing, at least we hope not, not at least not inside the robot. Uh, the low humidity it, it, in the warehouse, it doesn't get that bad. So we could go 20. We could go. Now that's a good one, 20. Uh, high humidity, it could be pretty high, especially in some environments. So we'll take it up to 80. The altitude in meters is, uh, our profiles use 200 meters, but we decided that uh, many of the warehouses, at least a strong percentage of them are located near um, the ocean, seaports. And if we think in the context of long-term average and fleet average, we've chosen 100 meters, which is still pretty high above sea level. The electrical overstress is low. I just can't imagine there's too much, but gee, salt, chemical corrosion. I'm thinking about all those warehouses near the ocean. I'm gonna put that at least as a medium. Should we put it as a high? Maybe, let's go ahead and make it high. Now, mechanical shock and vibration, that's definitely high. That robot's gonna be moving around and maybe uh, running fast and hitting walls and so forth. Now we can characterize the internal ambient temperature. Imagine that our robot runs most of the day and then goes to a charging station where it's powered down. We have a pretty high, a pretty nice, powerful microcomputer in there. So I'm thinking we've estimated a 30 degree temperature rise between inside the robot and the outside case. We could do better if we put in more heat sinks perhaps, but not yet. We can come back later and the FMEDA tool will recalculate for us. But, when we're powered down, the only heat source is probably going to be the battery charger and the battery. Well, not the charger, but the battery charging. So I think it's going to drop close to ambient. Let's say 
25 degrees C. All right. How much? Well, charging six, seven, maybe eight hours. That's that's a third of the 24. We're going to say 30% is in charging and 70% of the time it's operating. Good guess for now. Now, temperature cycles. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, think about it. The stress when metal expands and contracts, that impacts connectors, it impacts um, integrated circuit packaging, PC boards. We're going to do that every day. So we're going to have a 25, we've estimated a 25 degree temperature differential 365 times a year. Now, there's also going to be an average, the temperatures are going to change during the year, of course, obviously, depending on the you know, region of the world, but we'll say on average, let's give it a pessimistic 10 degrees C, once per year. Great. All we have to do now is save it. I'll we'll type in a new name. Um... Robot Warehouse 1, just in case we have more than one. Save it, and we're ready to use it. And remember, all I have to do is load up an old FMEDA. Now I can call out and specify the profile we've just generated, and it'll recalculate all the failure rates for us. Wow. I've enjoyed working with this very much, doing a lot of what if analysis, that's for sure. Please come back for more of our OEMX instructional videos. We're going to show you how to take in the longer run. We're going to create a set of videos to show you how to go from a complete development process all the way from requirements to production modification and how the OEMX tool speeds up that process saves cost and development time. We very much like your, would like your comments. Please go right ahead and tell us, uh, send us emails or let us know what you think about our tools. And if you're an existing OEMX user, let us know how you're doing. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.